I saw a title of an article on Bounding Into Comics. And as soon as I saw this title, it immediately piqued my interest. And I was like, huh, this is interesting. Maybe things are shifting in the comic book space. So the title of the article is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Publisher IDW Seeking to Create More Original IPs. Subjects of interest include superheroes, crime, and modern day retellings of Bible stories. That one definitely piqued my interest. This article was written by Spencer Bakuli. And the article says, in ostensible service of attempting to become a genuine competitor in the world of comic book multimedia, IDW is moving to balance out its current stable of licensed series with a brand new roster of original and wholly, uh, and wholly publisher owned IPs. I'll say if there was ever a time where someone like IDW could come in and launch some new here, now they have to be good. I think what they would have to do is launch an entire universe. I think people genuinely are willing to get behind something new if it's good. I think there's a thirst. I think there's a renewed interest in superheroes. And I believe possibly the lackluster performance of Marvel and DC has opened a lane wide for a company like this to come in and compete. Now, I would argue that they don't really have to necessarily compete directly with, uh, the, I would say, the big three, as always say, Marvel, DC, and Image. They can just do their own thing and thrive. And I, I think they can make a lot of money. It says, as uh, recapped to the public by Bleeding Cool, Bleeding Cool's Rich Johnston, this pivot for the Sonic the Hedgehog and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, was first revealed by company CEO uh, Davidi Jonas during an impromptu investor call on September 16th. Speaking to shareholders in relation to the IDW's Q3 2024 earnings call that same day, it's unclear whether the investment call took place before or after the earnings report. Jonas began by admitting that the publisher has had a pretty rocky last five to seven years. If I was if I was in the position of one of these companies, I will tell you what I what I would do. There are so many very good creators, both artists and writers independently out there doing their own thing. I would probably run with a model similar. I would say similar to image, but different in this regard. I don't know about other people. I'm inclined to believe that there's many people in this boat. I think many of us comic book fans yearn for a expanding a new expanding comic universe similar to Marvel and DC. Not necessarily like Image where you have a bunch of independent stories that are disconnected in different universes and don't really have anything to do with each other coming from independent publishing houses. I'm not sure that that, that is the exact model that's being looked for and I think IDW is really in a good position to capitalize on what fans are looking for. So maybe I, I think comics are actually in a good position. Not that everything in comics is good, but I think many of these companies are realizing, yo, we need to bring something else to the table because we have been starving our fans for good content. The company went public in around 2009 and it was just a publishing company that really didn't do entertainment or entertainment exploitation, he explained. And as a publishing company, the business was quite profitable. It was a small company, entrepreneurial. Every dollar that was made went back into reinvesting into the business. 
but there were real cash reserves for the company. Around 2013, the company made the decision to make a foray into entertainment and decided to become something of a studio and a producer, Jonas continued. While we are while we now are reaping some of the benefits with Winona Earp as an example, those uh, those were costly investments and frankly did not pay off. It ended up cost, uh, causing IDW significant financial stress toward the end of 2019 and 2020. The company just had to pay off loans for the productions as well as investments into entertainment as an asset class, doing scripts and developments and building a studio. In those things, he panned out. I think everybody would be on a yacht clinking glasses and saying how brilliant the idea was. In retrospect, it didn't work and those investments didn't pay off. I tell you what I think one of the, the big problems some of these big companies have is you have companies ran by people who don't necessarily love comic books. And this typically generates a problem. If you don't understand, if you don't love it, you don't understand the audience. If you don't understand the audience, you will not understand what will keep their attention. There are great businessmen that suck at input, whatever entertainment medium, comic books, movies, music. They're great businessmen, but they don't love this medium enough to understand, okay, what do the fans actually want? And that may have been what happened here. And that may that may be what has happened to many of these companies. I would include uh, the big three in there as well. When I came into IDW about 16 months ago, the company was in pretty uh, precarious in a pretty precarious spot. He further recall they had gotten back down to a place where they were pretty low on cash. By the time we were able to uh, staunch the bleeding, the company had gone from a uh, start of the year at about 10 and a half million in cash, about three and, uh, to about three and a half million. That's, that's a huge fall. That is a huge fall. It says turning the future. Jonas noted, We've confidently turned things around and feel that we are on a path of profitability. We are already profitable and believe we will be substantially prof uh, sustainably sustainably profitable, excuse me. And I don't know. I've never I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've, I don't think I own any IDW comic books. I wanted to buy the Batman uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles run. I had a chance to. And I didn't, and eh, I missed out. I'm sure I could find it somewhere if I'm really looking for it. I just haven't been looking that hard. But I don't know. I, I don't know how well IDW is doing right now. He says they're doing better, and I don't know what his goal is, like exactly how profitable he wants to be. But man, for the love of comic books, would one of these companies actually just hire someone who loves comics? Now, that doesn't necessarily always work as much as, look, I am, I would consider myself a Jim Lee stan. I love Jim Lee. I, I, I grew up reading comic books that he put the pencil to, but man, I don't think he's doing a great job at DC at all, like not even slightly. So sometimes getting someone who loves comics doesn't necessarily automatically mean success, but maybe Jim Lee is at the age where he's made his money. He loves comics, but is his all really into it? He has a family and other things he's focused on, which I understand. It takes a special kind of person to get into something and love it enough to really give that thing the attention it needs while also maintaining a personal life. I, I will admit, I, I do not think that's an easy task. So I don't envy the person who runs a company like this and has to find someone to fulfill that role. It says, 
We're on a path of profitability and we are expecting 2025 uh, when our physical uh, year starts November 1st of 2024 that uh, that starts our physical 25. We expect it to be an event better and even better uh, year than the turnaround. Man, I, I screwed that all the way up. Excuse me. He teased on uh, he teased of the company's current status. We're going to be profitable this this is our year. Uh our our expectation uh, excuse me, let me read that again. Man, I'm bumbling this all up. Maybe it's how this is written. Maybe it's just me bugging out not knowing how to read. We're going to be profitable. This is our expectation. But when you consider the swing from losing about 7 million to where we are now, it is, it's not just the profitability. It was the ability to make that swing in such a short period of time, which is a good thing. Look, that is a good thing. The problem I think I see here or, or the potential problem is there is business turnarounds and businessmen know how to do this, but you really got to tap in with the fans. What do fans want? And have you met the needs of these fans? A lot of companies have been tossing fans to the wayside, unfortunately. And I don't think these companies are faring too well who've decided to do that. He says, we've retained top talent and we are investing in our talent. We believe that the future of our company is the people and their ability to deliver, to create and to collaborate. And that's uh, and that's where we're investing our resources. Good for him. It seems like he has a plan moving forward. Is it necessarily the right plan, though? Again, I think IDW is probably in a good position. I'm not going to read the, the full article. Go to Bounding Into Comics and check it out. But that caught my attention. I think there is a turnaround due for the comic industry. I want the comic industry to turn around. And I think there are clear signs that there are opportunities for people to get into the space. If look, this is just my guess. If you are an artist, if you are a writer, if you have any kind of connection in any way to produce something that is good, you know, it's, it's got to be good, man, I think this is the time to do it. I think if there was ever a time where you can get an inroad, there was a time where being able to navigate your way into the comic book space and get around Marvel and DC image managed to do it, but it wasn't easy. And these were a lot of guys that came from Marvel and DC and the fans knew these guys and they already had an inbuilt fan base, but to start something new at that time, it was hard. It was hard to get in. It's not so hard. Now, the only thing that's missing is it's just got to be good. If I was in that that space, writing and drawing, I would strike now while the iron is hot. That is just my humble opinion.